Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Friday. Before getting into today's topic, I have to go back and talk about what's happened in the past couple days in the stock market since my last video. In the last video, I talked about some of the things that I was going to be watching going forward. I've been watching stuff like uh, the CARES Act stuff running out by the end of the month, but this week specifically, I was watching earnings reports. This week specifically, I was watching earnings reports from Microsoft and Tesla, which came out after the bell on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we had some unemployment data that came out that moved the market significantly. It was actually more than I overall expected. Tesla with their earnings report killed pretty much every aspect of their earnings report. They had massive beats on revenue, earnings per share, deliveries, and as a result, they had their fourth straight profitable quarter. That's actually big news because it's one of the requirements to be listed on the S&P 500. And at first I was like, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Uh, the company has done incredibly well. They don't need that backing of being on the S&P. But what that does mean is a lot of these firms out there are legally required to own a certain number of shares of every stock on the S&P. And as a result, that could increase the buying pressure on Tesla and could push the stock price even higher than we're already seeing right now. And so even though they beat expectations significantly uh, on Wednesday after hours, the stock was only up around 5%. So it could be that people are already kind of thinking this is the max that Tesla could be going, or they're just kind of waiting to see what happens with the overall market. And then Microsoft came out with earnings just before that, and they did pretty well overall. They had uh, some beats on revenue, earnings per share. They had some weak outlook when it comes to their Azure product. Um, but besides that, things look pretty good. However, the market was not super impressed and shares slid around 3% after hours. And so this is going to be really interesting, specifically from Microsoft, because they beat expectations on a lot of areas of their report. However, they didn't do as well as maybe people would have hoped. They beat expectations, but not by that much. And based off of how high many of these tech stocks are right now, it's possible that if you don't release earnings reports similar to Tesla that just kind of blows everything out of the water, the market's not going to react too positively to it. So that was one of the things I was watching going forward are the earnings reports from the FANG stocks. That's Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. So far, we've seen Netflix and Microsoft, which not in FANG, but is a huge mover of the overall market. And so it's going to be something to watch going forward what these other major tech stocks release for their earnings reports. And then the unemployment news that came out on Thursday moved the market down significantly. When I woke up in the morning, things were trading down around half a percent. And then the unemployment data came out worse than expected with 1.4 million uh, new jobless claims, which was the 18th straight month of more than a million. And it was higher than the 1.3 estimate and the market fell because of that. And so at one point, the NASDAQ was down around 3%, but it closed down around two. And while we've been seeing some good news from uh, demand for housing and stuff like that, this is actually the first time we've seen an increase in the jobless claims in a couple weeks, and so that's pretty significant. And that makes sense why the market reacted to that. Also, I saw a really interesting graphic that for the first time ever, the volume of options traded actually exceeded the volume of normal shares traded. And that's just kind of interesting to think about. And it makes a lot of sense because with how the market's been moving, it makes sense that a lot of investors are kind of betting on the overall market. All right, now let's start talking about Twitter, which is today's topic. They released earnings on Thursday before the bell, and it was pretty interesting. Twitter is one of my favorite products out there and is a stock that I've held for pretty much the entirety that I've been investing in the overall market. And so in today's video, I wanted to talk about the numbers that came out of that earnings report, how I felt about them, and then we're gonna hop on the computer and talk about some tough conversations. If you've been on YouTube at all looking at investing videos, most of the videos, even on my channel, have been when to buy or why I buy stocks. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the earnings report, how my shares have done in the entirety that I've held them, and then I'm gonna talk about why I've actually decided to cut the cord for Twitter, and I'm actually gonna be selling my shares. And so this goes into all of the different parts of my videos, the fundamental analysis, looking at the earnings report. We're gonna be talking about the overall market conditions, and then we're gonna be finishing up with the technical analysis that I think is really interesting. So I hope that you stay towards the end of the video to watch that. Before getting started, I have to say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Anything you hear in this video is just my own opinions and the reasons why I'm selling my Twitter shares. Also, if you've been enjoying these videos, I really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. With that long intro out of the way, let's get into it and start talking about Twitter, ticker symbol TWTR. As I mentioned, Twitter has been doing pretty well so far this year, trading for just above $38, and it's up around 20% year to date. So they released earnings on Thursday, so let's start off with those numbers. And the first thing that jumped out to me and Wall Street overall was the revenue numbers, which there was a significant drop overall. They recorded $680 million of revenue compared to 840 in the last quarter and down from the around 700 million that analysts expected. And so I saw that miss and I expected things to be not going so great for the company overall. I was thinking yesterday that if the market 
did not like the overall earnings report, I would probably be adding it to my position. But there were some things that earnings report that the market actually really liked. And the main factor is actually the reason why I really like Snapchat and Twitter overall is from their data on the monetizable daily average users. This is a metric that just kind of shows the popularity of the platform overall, and it shows the number of people that they can actually make money off of when it comes to ad revenue, which has been a huge problem as we've seen in this past quarter when revenue dropped significantly. So overall, Twitter saw a 20 million user jump, and it's currently sitting at 186 daily average users, which is pretty nice. And we go back to the revenue, we can see the breakdown of where the revenue is coming from. And more than half of it's coming from uh, inside the US, which makes a lot of sense. So going back to that chart, it just shows how steady the increase has been in daily average users. This is a platform that continues to get larger over time. And if they can kind of work out some of the kinks, they had that ad bug uh, quarter three of last year. And if they can get that figured out and they can start making some more money, this stock is gonna be doing incredibly well. However, we've seen some problems in the previous quarters where their revenue, the annual revenue looks good. However, the quarterly revenue just kind of goes back and forth between being really good and then having some problems and being poor. And so that kind of makes me feel kind of lukewarm on the stock overall. And after that beat on the daily average users, the stock was up around 7% at one point and I think closed around up 4.5%. So it was the reason why my overall portfolio was green yesterday while the overall market was pretty red. And so now talking about my position, this is a stock that I've held for a long time and it's been a part of my portfolio since pretty much the very beginning. At this point, my shares are up 39% overall. And the reasoning behind that is because I significantly added to my position when the market fell back in March. So while the stock is only up 20%, I added significantly towards the bottom and that's why I'm up almost 40% right now. Now that we've gotten that out of the way and talked about kind of where I am with my shares, let's hover to the charts and talk about technical analysis and the main reason why I've actually decided to sell my shares of Twitter. All right, so here we are looking at Twitter, and I decided to take all of my drawings off at the very beginning just so you can get a kind of a baseline what the the price movement has looked like in the past. This is the uh, five-year, one-day chart. Uh, it's actually going to go back further. Uh, if you scroll back this way, you can see the entire history of the stock. But the reason I'm talking about Twitter today is when I put in my drawings, when I go to the default, uh, we're going to go back to the 180-day uh, the chart. And this is where we see some interesting things. So in the past on this channel, I've talked a lot about the importance of momentum and breaking uh, very important resistances because you have these resistances because they've been areas where the, the price movement has not been able to break through that area. The buying usually stops and the sellers come in and it pushes it lower. And one of my favorite places to look to break these levels is during earnings, which is actually what we just had. And today when I woke up, I was really excited to see the price movement that uh, Twitter had had. And when I go to the, maybe the five day, 15 minute chart, uh, you can see that the stock pushed up early in the morning and I saw it start to get rejected above the resistance that I had charted. And then I went to see it if it was gonna get tested again and it went up and it immediately got rejected and sold off towards the later part of the day. That is having to do with the overall market sell-off, sure. But when we go and look at the one-year chart, this is where we start to see some really interesting things, actually. So we have this earnings report here shown by the uh, the blue bell. And then you come down here, you have the earnings. Uh, doesn't really affect this. And then we have this earnings right here back in uh, February. And so what the stock did is earnings were released in the morning. The stock gapped up, shot up here, tried to get above this $40 area and got rejected and got pushed down. And so this is interesting because this is the exact same price level that the stock was unable to break through today. And then if you go to the earnings report before that is where the stock gapped down from that exact area. So this is like, when I chart out resistance lines, this is a pretty serious one. And then if you go back even further to this earnings report, I'll let me break, bring the chart over a little further. And then you go back to this earnings report, uh, from July of last year, a full year ago, uh, it was at this exact same level. So this is a very serious level, this $30, this $39 price range. And the fact that the stock pushed above it and was unable to break through it, the fact that I'm sitting at a 39% gain right now, the fact that the market is incredibly overextended, and I'm seeing all of these reasons why the market should be falling, is one of the reasons why I'm going to be selling my shares of Twitter. I'm thinking of it more as a... Uh, like taking a break from a relationship, not a breakup, because I 100% intend to be back in Twitter when the market falls, um, or if just Twitter falls in general. But at this point, I'm happy taking my almost 40% worth of profit, taking my money out of the market and just wait for better opportunities, whether that be with Twitter or with other stocks. So when the market opens tomorrow, I will be closing my position on Twitter and waiting for better opportunities. 
Overall, technical analysis is probably my favorite part about investing overall, and I don't get to use it as much anymore because of just how volatile the market has been overall. But when I saw the charts today for how strong that resistance is at $39, and I normally talk about how earnings reports are usually the catalyst that can push you through those levels, and this is the third or fourth time the stock has tried to push through that level and has not been successful, it's gonna be one of the main reasons why I'm actually gonna be selling my shares. That resistance, in addition to the overall market conditions, the fact that I'm up almost 40% and I'd rather have my money in cash right now, were the main factors that led me to this decision. On this channel, I talk a lot about why I buy stocks and I wanna be pretty transparent on why I decide to actually sell my shares. So I decided that since the earnings report came out yesterday, I wanted to make a video specifically about Twitter and why I'm deciding to sell my shares. This is a stock that I hope to get back into my portfolio at a cheaper price relatively soon, but I'm just gonna to have to be patient. And if the stock market continues to go up, you know what, I missed out on some extra gains, but I saw a lot of signs overall that told me that I should sell my share. So let me know what you thought about my decision overall, and let me know what you think about the Twitter earnings report that came out on Thursday in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all the support, and I will see you next Monday.